Lovely. Go ahead. Okay, so I am talking about zoonotic diseases. Um, so I tried to, p I picked three to talk about and I tried to pick ones that are not as common maybe or people don't really know about um, or are more rare, just so that maybe you learn something new today. Okay, so what is a zoonotic disease? Most of, everybody usually knows, you know, it's a disease that can be spread between animals and humans. Um, it's caused by, it can either be viruses, bacteria, parasites, or fungi. Uh, and there's approximately 150 zoonotic diseases known to exist. I've seen also around the 200s. I've seen conflicting things, but around 150 to 200 is generally. So the first one I'm talking about is Q fever. Uh, it is caused by a, it's a bacterial zoonotic disease caused by, uh, I'm not sure on the pronunciation, Coxilia burnetti? That's close something enough. Something like that. Um, this is just the picture of, you know, the bacteria. Um, so it is, can be carried by sheep, goats, cattle, um, some wild mammals, dogs, cats, birds, and ticks. Um, transmission, so it's usually through human <coughs> inhalation, so it's airborne and um, of contaminated, it can be dust, um, or it can be direct contact with infected animals or contaminated materials. Um, uh, so I kind of did both. I wanted to kind of do the animal <coughs> symptoms and the human symptoms, just to give both sides of the story. Um, animal symptoms, the disease is usually subclinical, um, but pregnant females, um, which it does affect pregnant, pregnant females, more often, um, they can develop necrotizing placentitis, which results in abortion. Um, and in humans, you get high fevers, severe headache, general malaise, is that how you say it, malaise? Uh, chill and or sweats, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, <coughs> etc. Um, so treatment and prevention. Um, so there, are, is a, there is a vaccine for treatment that exists for both humans and animals, but is not available for use in the US. Um, I read that They've developed a vaccine in Australia for humans and animals, but it's not become commercially commercially available here. I'm not sure why, um, but that's just what I read. Uh, best prevention methods uh, is proper sanitation, uh, segregated kidding liming areas, um, just with birth, within the birthing area, proper removal of risk material from birthing areas, and good manure management. Um, so the second one is your cineosis, um, it is also a bacterial zoonotic disease. It's caused by your cinea enter enterocolitica, trying. And this is also a picture of the bacteria. Um, it is mostly carried by pigs, so this is uh, really heavy on the, the pigs. But it can also be come from rodents, rabbits, sheep, cattle, horses, dogs, and certain strains in cats. Um, transmission is usually uh, through contaminated, undercooked, or raw meat. Um, so when people eat raw meat or undercooked meat, um, but it can also, and, and when you ingest it, like humans ingest it, uh, it can also be through unpasteurized milk, which is, I thought was interesting. Well, unpasteurized milk, some people swear by it, they right. want unpasteurized milk, which is, to me, a little crazy, but. I think so, too. <laughs> so for animals, there's usually no symptoms, which uh, makes this one a bit tougher. Um, animals usually won't show uh, symptoms, but the human symptoms uh, include fever, abdominal pain, uh, diarrhea, which is often bloody. Um, there's also pain on the right side of the abdomen, which may be confused for appendicitis. Um, and then the prevention and treatment for this one. Um, for severe cases, you can have, and there are antibiotics available. Um, but in general, the best prevention is just don't eat undercooked or raw meat, especially pork, since it is more prevalent in pigs. Um, and only drink pasteurized milk, which I'd say most people do. And then, like, you know, normal wash your hands with soap and water, especially after handling raw meat. And the third disease is called babesiosis, or something like that. Um, this one is a parasitic um, zoonotic disease, and it's caused by the Babesia microti parasites that infect red blood cells. So this one is mostly a tick 
uh, tick-borne um, disease. The oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so it is carried by the black legged or deer ticks. They're called deer ticks, and most people know what those are. Um, and they can be transmitted to a range of uh, a range of wild and domestic animals as well as humans. So it's the transmission is tick borne. You get bit by the tick. Uh, it stays in your skin, and, and if it's infected, it'll inject it into you through its saliva. Um, animal symptoms include fever, anemia, hemolysis, uh, jaundice, or red, red urine. And human symptoms, uh, a lot of people don't have symptoms from this, but they can develop uh, flu-like symptoms. And the prevention, um, there are effective treatments available for both humans and animals, so it's not a big deal if you were to get bit by the tick and develop something from it. Um, the best prevention, minimize contact with brush and long grass, especially during warm months. Uh, use repellents and wear long clothing, um, and check for ticks after being in areas that are known to have ticks. Pretty common things. And just kind of the take one message, which most of you all know already, is remember zoonotic diseases, diseases are more easily prevented than they are treated. So, You ready for questions? Questions, yes. Okay, questions, comments? It's a crazy world out there with 150 or 200, 200 diseases that can Has pass. anyone heard of these, any of these three? Like, are they pretty common or did you maybe learn something new? Hopefully, I don't know. Oh, I, there was, fever. There's so yeah. many of them yeah. and yeah. I just, yeah. I saw a lot of them. I was like, But we talked and they said, pick out a couple, don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's too many. Hard there there are, there's a, I mean, especially, and they're called zoonotic diseases because the best place to, you know, get any of those is in the zoo settings. Right, so yeah. You have so yeah. many animals that it can 